Welcome back to Smashing Heads Podcast. This is going to be our recap for Double Agents, Episode 2. As always, my name is Zach, and I'm joined by my wife, Hannah. Hey, what's up? My best friend, Jake. We have been trying for the last 10 <laughs> minutes to get this pod started, and Zach has been so goofy. Yeah. We're just it's... giggling over oh, here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Giggle How's fans? everybody doing? <laughs> you, know, well, you know me. If you, I, can I, let me, let's start off like this. Okay. We did an Instagram live. Mm-hmm. Uh, just just right before we started, about twenty two minutes, which, which we try to do before we record. Uh, every time a new season is going on, when we do these like past season recaps, we don't do it. But um, it's always late because one specifically Wednesday is a bad night for us to record, so we don't get to watch until way later. Um, so they usually happen around eleven to eleven thirty p.m. Central Time. Yeah. So tonight. If you just want an idea of what to expect from these Instagram lives, we really dived into my personal life in particular. By and, your choice. And some shots were taken at my character. But you know what? We're all three still in here in the room because even in the midst of it, I know these guys say everything they do out of love and care and concern. All right? But if you if you really... We don't just give you, you know, a not so in in detail breakdown of what we just watched because we want to save all our takes for the pod. Yeah. But we also give you insight into our personal lives. And and, and as I said on the IG Live, I think you no s- one else provides that for you. I think you specifically said, let's get into my personal life or let's something get in, along yeah, those lines. Yeah, let's get into my personal life. And we did. <laughs> we and, sure did. And there were some people on my side and there were some people not on my side. But here, It was a fun conversation, here, honestly. Here's also, that was fun. Here's also the know. thing, though. Like... They don't know the totality of the story. Okay. Just in general. Like, or, like, or the previous people that have been involved. Um, actually, some of them do know one of them. Actually, yeah, they the do. Most shout recent out, shout out to our patrons. Yeah. yeah. They are well um, aware. But, but the a fan of hers, if I remember. From the I think you were the only one. Yeah. Like, immediately not a fan. Yeah, she actually came and hang out, hung out with us at uh, Challenge Mania Nashville. And Some of you guys may have seen, seen that's, her there. That's yeah. when a lot of people reached out to me and were like, we hate her. And I was like, mm, That was me. Okay. I was texting Hannah. I was like, hey. Let me be clear. Just, <laughs> I know she doesn't go back and listen to these. But in the event that she just decided, I wonder what my ex is up to. And if he says anything about me on his podcast. Almost constantly. <laughs> Let me just say. You think I, she'd be excited to hear this? I wish nothing but the best for her. Yeah, we, we want She's, her to... Uh, you know, live happy and healthy. I personally don't care one way or the other. I do. I really wish her nothing but the best. Uh, she's not allowed back in my life again, but I wish her. <laughs> what was it? Jim Carrey that said. Uh, um, yes. He's a yes man. No, 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 no. What did he say? What'd he say? Uh, j- Somebody stop me. No, it's something about just. It's, <laughs> it's something about just because we're no longer friends doesn't uh, mean we're enemies. You know, I want you to eat just not at my table. That's the that's the one. That's the quote. I want you to eat just not at my table. It took a long walk. Yeah, to get to it was that like one. a little field trip. Yeah, yeah. C spot run, right? That's Frankie Muniz. No, that's oh, it was wasn't it? Clifford Kevin Bacon the, was the guy in that. Clifford the Big Red Dog. You forgot Kevin Bacon was in that, didn't you? I did actually. Uh, I don't know why she's saying Clifford no, it's the not. Big Red Dog. Yes, it is. He's the dad. I don't know. Kevin Bacon's the dad. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Luke Wilson. <laughs> Love me some Luke Wilson. Handsome. Yeah, sure. You think so? I, I, I'd take him over Owen. Yeah. He doesn't have a broken nose. Oh, that's... that's he real, was also in that 70s show. That's real degrading. Well. But it's okay if you do it. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Not even five minutes in, it's just completely ground to a stop. Uh, I didn't do this. <laughs> you guys were both part of it. Oh, Not God. really. Uh, yeah, so we're we're going to get into Double Agents. Uh, a lot to talk about tonight, a lot of big twists, a lot of things that uh, we we didn't necessarily see coming. But And we do have another fantasy that's, update that's coming. We've got all kinds yeah. of fantasy points tonight. I was going to say, last week, uh, because it was a new segment, uh, kind of slipped our minds to talk about it until the very end. Make sure to stick around to the end of the episode because... Uh, the fantasy segment, I have a Google spreadsheet of the scoring from last week, who's in the lead, who's not in the lead, uh, and then like specifically, I'm keeping track of week by week how many points we got so we can have a season total at the end. And so this is going to be a, an ongoing thing. 
Uh, if you didn't listen last week, go back and listen to it because uh, I think it's only probably been expounded upon from... I'm assuming you have a lot more this week than last week. Yeah, I've got a lot of fantasy points yeah, to give so, out tonight. It was also... Last week was still... Even though we got the special episode, last week was still more of an introductory episode. This week, I feel like things really got going. I felt there like, big, just more I felt like big T because I forgot that guy's name too. I wrote I wrote down in my notes... Joshua's doing something, and I was like, wait, was like, that's not his name. I didn't write down a name for him one time in any note I made for him. I just wrote down AGT. Listen, I don't like to toot my own horn. I think you do. I think you do sometimes. <laughs> but I did this. You know? <laughs> this whole fantasy thing here, this was me. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, am I right? <laughs> I, I literally just said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but people could mistake that for sarcasm, but you mean it. <laughs> yes. I explicitly mean that Jake did this. I did. It still kind of sounds sarcastic, I though. Did. Do you hear that? I did. I hit it. <laughs> yeah, you hear that? Uh, so, yeah, we're going to get into that. Make sure to stick around at the end, because uh, that's good. we're going to do this from here on out, probably. Uh, if it, we'll probably do it, you know what, even on every other new season, but even when we do old season recaps. We'll, we'll, yeah, just, we'll just start doing it. I mean, it's fun. So that means we're going to have to draft every season we do. Wait, here's the thing. If we do previous seasons, how would that work out? Because we could just, the first person that, whoever gets first pick could just pick the winner. Do you think about that? <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, like, that's the strategy. Or like, if, if, we, if we know whoever does, like, a but lot you know of what? daily wins. That doesn't wins, guarantee that you, you win, win the season. Yeah. The season. You, you could just have a tr- you could have a train wreck of a, a personality that gets in drama and fights everyone and cries all the time, and then just makes it to the final and doesn't win, but could get you more points. So that's what you got to think about. If you're doing people who get kicked off the show, get you a crazy amount of points. You might burn like you know. If we're watching uh, uh what's what's the se- what's the season where Adam Royer got kicked off like day one? Uh, rivals. Rivals one. one rivals one. one. And so you might pick Adam Royer just to get those points. Like you're guaranteed like a hundred points from getting kicked off or something like that. Again, with it, we'll we'll figure this out as we go. This is a whole new concept. We're just doing it as we go. Uh, it's we're like having, we've been we've been uh, introduced to a whole new world. It's like we're living in Aladdin. Did you ever play that Aladdin game on Sega? That's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Um, the, the Lion King. Most one was of those cartoon oriented games were hard. Like the Toy Story game. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I had man. I had a Nintendo sixty four and a, and a Super Nintendo Toy You're Story. You're in game. a Nintendo sixty four t shirt right now. I, I actually am, but yeah, that... I, had, I had a Nintendo sixty four Toy Story game, and I remember it was before the time of like internet help, and like you would just get to a point in a video game and be like, "Well, I guess that's all I'm ever going to get to see." And then when you want to play again, you just start over, and then you never get past it. I never, I I don't know what happened at the rest of that Toy Story game. I may need to go get it. I've got it in sixty four. Uh, you can find a walkthrough on YouTube. That's true. I think I want to play it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like, uh, like we always say, um, make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. At Smashing Heads on Twitter, and then it's at Smashing Heads Podcast and everything else. We don't have a TikTok or a Snapchat or anything like that because I don't want those apps on my phone. So, uh, if there, if you are following one on there. Uh, <laughs> It's not us. He said that in such a funny way. What was funny about that? You were like, I, just, I don't want those apps on my phone. I don't. <laughs> I don't want them. But it is a, a, a ritual for us now to watch mm-hmm. cringe TikTok before we that, ever even start yep. the Yeah, so that, that's, show. that's my life goal is I want to watch a cringe TikTok, comp, TikTok compilation TikTok. where we see somebody that we know unironically on it. Like someone that we're like... Hey, did you see uh, Andrew on there this week? Yeah. And it would be like, oh my gosh, can you believe it? And then that would be a real thing. Um, so hopefully that'll happen one day. Uh, you know. You're really holding out hope. Like, you, you watch these cringe compilations on YouTube mm-hmm. pretty religiously. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's because you enjoy how uncomfortable they make me. Mm-hmm. Or if it's for the purpose of hoping that you find someone you know on there. It's it's all. 
all the above. There was one we watched tonight that made me really crack up about a guy with a potato chip at a funeral. Yeah, I didn't understand that one. I don't think you understood that one either. I, but it was funny. It was like, I eat my chips at a funeral. <laughs> I didn't funeral, get it, but it was funny. And then it's like, Ma- my yeah. mom. And then she's like, why do you have chips? And then they both just eat chips. I don't. It didn't make any sense. <laughs> but uh, good joke. So uh, we don't have a TikTok, so don't follow us on there. Um, but we do have a Patreon, and patreon.com slash smashing its podcast. Uh, for everyone... Uh, bloodlines level and above there are three different levels on our patreon we uh, we will be scheduling a zoom hangout next week at some point and uh i think it got brought up in the slack group which is another perk of the bloodlines group is um that whoever wins the fantasy season for this one needs to come on the the podcast and so i'm i'm fine with that we just need to yeah. it's going to be a while i think the season's going to be like 19 episodes well it will not be me uh, I got put are, out. Are by... they t- are they talking about fantasy football or are they talking about the fantasy challenge league? Uh, I, I just assumed fantasy football. It could, we could do one or both. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I did it on our fantasy football league. I, I snuck into the playoffs and then upset the number one seed this week, which was my little brother. Yeah, I bet he's real um, sad. He about was it. really upset about yes. it. The, all he was with really? me. He was he was with me Sunday and all day. He I had his phone out every five minutes checking it. He was ten and three and I was seven and six. Bar- barely he, snuck in. He called me. He was like. What a waste of a season. <laughs> That's a pretty good impression. Yeah, that yeah. is kind of what he sounds like. Uh, but... So anyway, check all that out. Uh, Smashing, Head Pod- Smashing Heads Podcast.com slash store takes you to uh, our merch shop. Uh, I, You probably won't get it by Christmas if you order even right now. If you order exclusively when you hear this and go and just buy something, shipping is so far behind on everything that i doubt it would be at your house but maybe it'd be a good new year's gift or something you know what order order stop what you're doing pause it pause the podcast I mean, you get to listen go to order you something and then it will be a new year's resolution to surprise yourself from the past god that doesn't make any sense well it would show up after the new year Maybe, or they could pay like a crazy amount and get like expedited shipping. I don't know how that works. I'm just going to say, if you want to buy something from our web store, don't expect it by Christmas unless you want to do that, and then that's on you, your fault. On you, your fault? That's how I feel about it. You guys ready to get into... Let's do it, man. It's been... Double uh, Agents. Yeah. Episode two. By the way, great episode. Solid season so far. Including the, the, the fake episode at the beginning. That, did you ever go back and watch? I did not. I still think it's worth it. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. So, basically, this episode kicks off where... Uh, and let me just say, I'm okay. I'm leaning on you guys for the notes here. Because my, my attention is purely geared towards fantasy points But maybe now. it'll trigger your... It will. Yeah. It will. Like, I have a yeah. good recollection of what happened tonight. You, you watched... I did you, watch. You it. watched pretty pretty intently because you had to keep up with points. Yeah. It's just you know, once we start talking about things, it's going to have to yeah. pull out of your brain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're we, making a lot of noise. <laughs> we kick off uh, this episode exactly where episode one left off, where uh, TJ tells Natalie. Hey, now you get to choose. You can pick CT, or you can pick anyone else other than Fessy and Anissa, which you can or pick stay with like. Wes. Yeah, I mean, you I was, didn't say that. I was getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, uh, so Choke on that coffee. So anyway, I, I said last week, oh, uh, I think she's going to stick with Wes because clearly she knew who Wes was heading into this. She knew his game. She knew that type of stuff. She's she's from what I can see, has at least watched some of the challenge in the past. To be familiar West. with him, yeah, for sure. And so uh, I I thought she'd stick with Wes. She ended up doing just that. Uh, I still think that's the best move because she already has a target on her back, but then she also might have staved off some advances of some other teams because she just proved, like, I could take these girls out. I mean, I think... Most of, not just most of the girls, but most of the people in the house saw Natalie before this and knew that she would be a major threat. And then after watching how incredibly talented she is in this elimination, 
I think that just even furthered that point. I think it did scare off even more people. Um, did you notice that when she decided to stay with Wes, that Wes was like biting his lip to hold back a smile? Because he was really excited that she decided to stay with him. I'm going to throw that one to you. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, we, we do find out. Astute observation, by the way. Jake. We do find out that CT is now another, uh, we got another catchphrase. This season's full of, like, mission-oriented spy-themed Nicknames. stuff. Uh, he's now a rogue agent, mm-hmm. and his uh, partner will come from the next Illumination, which I, w- I, I believe we talked about briefly. I wonder if there will be a ghost protocol. Uh, I hope so, because, <laughs> by the way, uh, I love... Everyone in the Mission Impossible. Oh my movies. god, they're so, incredible. Yeah, we went and saw the the latest one a couple of years ago, right in theaters with no talky Seth. Yeah, That's the, right. the one with uh, with uh, what's his name from Superman, right, Henry, Henry Henry Cavill. Yeah, and I hadn't watched any of them but the first and the second one. Oh, and seeing that seventh was it the sixth one. Seeing that sixth one, I was like, I gotta go back and yeah. watch like three, four, and five. They're now. great, and they're incredible. Yeah, one is more. Tom, of a- is Tom Cruise? Is he the when you consider like how late in his age he is, is he the greatest like action, consistent action movie star? I don't know about that, but he he it's it's pretty rare. Harrison that, Ford. No, nah, I'd put Tom Cruise. It's Harrison. pretty it's pretty rare that he puts out something bad. I will say like Swing and a Miss on the Mummy. Um, that yeah. did, that was supposed to launch a whole dark cinematic universe, and that literally killed every single movie after that. S- so they're they're shooting the new one now. I was about to talk about that. Yeah. So he, you know, there's this audio floating around out there. I saw on Twitter today where he is like crushing some of the production staff because they weren't following. I don't blame. Uh, I don't blame COVID him. protocols because he he, he said, was like, "Y'all break these again, you're fired." Well, he he's like, "Listen, he's like, think of all the thousands of people that lost their jobs and are losing their homes because our industry shut down." And you're here screwing around and are going to cause, you know, possibly cause us to halt production and all this stuff. And again, I'm not. Listen, Tom Cruise, I think he does make good movies. I think also he is in a crazy cult. And uh, we're going to we're going to separate those two things for a minute. Mm -hmm. Uh, I 100 percent agreed with what he did on staff. I mean, on that thing, because he basically was like, you are potentially costing millions of dollars in delays and lost salaries by not taking this serious. He's like, if we get shut down, that's going to cause so much problems. And he's like, you don't take that home at night. I take that home on my shoulders, and I talk to the studio heads, and I'm producing, and whatever. And I was like, put the fear of God in them. Like, let, let them know where it's at. Like, or the it, fear of Scientology. The fear of Xenu in them. Is uh, that what it is? Yeah, it's an alien named Xenu. Did you not know that? No. Yeah. You learn something new every day. Yeah, so, uh, again, I, 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 I do love the, and Simon Pegg's great in them. I and, like Simon Pegg. Uh, Emilio Estevez was in the first one. Ving Rhames. Ving Rhames. Uh, but CT's a rogue agent. Great, great call. CT back. is the next Tom Cruise. Oh, God. Tom Cruise is like 5'7". Um, but yeah. Uh, CT would be a good Mission Impossible villain. <laughs> he started his acting career. Like, like the maybe muscle maybe for like the real him. villain. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he that's Yeah, what like, he like the right hand man. Yeah. 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 Uh, like Ronda Rousey was in. Whatever Fast and Furious movie that's that right. was. I forgot she was in there. Uh, so uh, the next elimination determines who his next partner is. It doesn't necessarily mean he will get the girl whose partner went home because then the other person can act to switch and yeah. all that type of stuff. Um, but good news is he's not going home because he didn't even get to compete. Yeah. Uh, Leroy looked like he was going to throw up when TJ announced this because... Foreshadowing, we do see someone throw up later. That's Don't why I put that note in. You went back and put that note in? No. I was like, I no, not. there's no way. <laughs> God. Um, yeah, they get back to the house, and CT just decides he's going to start messing with Cam and then kind of grovel a little bit, but then at the same time just try to screw with Josh. And, uh, I mean, I don't really think CT is scared. I do think he realizes the numbers are against him and Cam uh, – took it very personally that he didn't uh like team up with her but like we it showed the clip from what happened again and he is like why should we be partners just and she's like kill her and i was like that's not really an that answer. was the only that was one word that's yeah. all she said and i mean when she when she asked him about it 
or told him, you know, that it really offended her, his only response was, I wasn't ready for that kind of commitment. Yeah, he was playing it off. Yeah, I mean, so. again, and now Josh is going to think CT's his big rival because he lives in a dream world. Well, it can't be Wes again. Oh, in his mind, yeah, it is. It's Wes and Giant Bananas and uh, Darrell and Landon, who wasn't even on the same seasons with him. Anyone who's ever been good at the challenge, Josh is like, they're gunning for me. I know it. He's just annoying, you know. That. <laughs> There's only one other challenge-related podcast that I listen to just because, you know, this is what we cover all the time. And it is Bill Simmons and Jacoby who decided to do it because they were the original podcast I ever heard talk about the challenge in, like, 2011. They were the ones who came up with a Battle of the Exes instead of Battle of the Sexes, all that type of stuff. They're doing 20-minute recaps this season, and it's so different from anything else. So I listen to them. It's really good. They, like, I I actually like listening to yeah, it. Yeah, and she didn't listen to any of it back then, but they... <laughs> and she didn't listen to the Cam interview either. That's true. No, so. I, we talk about the challenge so much, I can't listen to any more of it. They think Josh but, is the most annoying person in the cast. He is. And I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, it's good to hear uh, that we're, we're all on the same page on that. Um, so, basically, Wes, I, I wrote the quote down because I, I think I wrote it because we needed quotes for an episode title. He said, to the whiteboard we go. Reading it back now, not a good quote to have in here. No. He also said they unnecessarily woke Sleeping Giants. Mm. There's that was an your favorite time. band. Sleeping Giants. Yeah, that was was your... that a band? Yeah. Is that going to be one of your songs of the week this no. week? He didn't even know they were a band. I didn't. I didn't know that was a band. Um, oh. So uh, then we get... AGT guy. Yeah, so we, this is where I wrote his name wrong. Everyone is like eating breakfast or lunch or something at the big dinner table in like the living area. And then you got uh, Joseph doing very strange workouts in front of everyone, even though there's a whole workout area outside and then there's... All kinds of rooms throughout the house. He's laying on the rug in front of the couch. It's weird. And, like, it's, I get it. Like, it, it is kind of crunches, but he's not even doing, like, the full motion of, like, crunches. Well, when they first cut to him, he was doing the ankle touches. He's like, I'm going to do a thousand. And I'm like, is this, is this really doing anything effective for, like, working out in the long term? I'm going to throw that to you. Jake. Um... He's not even doing full range of motion. Yeah, yeah he's barely his, moving at all. His form, there's really not hardly any form there. So that alone is an indicator that he ain't really doing an awful lot there. Um, uh, especially those crunches where he had his legs straight up in the air. Like He's moving like two inches. Maybe that. Yeah. So, no, I, I definitely wouldn't work out like that. Well, and it's it's like Leroy is like, what is this guy doing? And at the end, he's like, cool. He's like, you're still very weak, though. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That was that was the first uh, bad vibe you get from him on this. There's a lot of bad vibes that come later. Um, I just I he, he's from a singing competition and he rode motocross, which is competitive, but, but not it's athletic. not physical. I mean, um, you got to be in shape to do it, I guess. Do but, you have to be in shape? I mean, you can't be like really fat and racing around now you're gonna weigh that bike down yeah think about it think of the math here <laughs> you put a hundred 150 pound man on there mm -hmm. how much do dirt bikes usually weigh would you say 80 uh, it, pounds it, it, let's how say how many weigh? 80 not even close uh it depends on like the engine size and all that type of stuff but throw me a weight out there i mean i would say uh, i'd say you're not Picking it up, I'd, I'd say a couple hundred at least. Oh, it's two hundred okay. pounds. Put a hundred fifty pound man on a two hundred pound bike. Look that up, and then put a. I'm going off motorcycle weights. And by then the way. put a two hundred and seventy pound man on that bike. Which bike do you think is going faster? The one with the guy that weighs less. <laughs> You're right. Why didn't I, I, it's not yeah. just. So, it's not did you ever just see motocross. Man, I, yes, yes. Uh, you put your fingernails, I, I, you get better torque. I was right on it. Uh, <laughs> the average overall weight for a dirt bike is for an adult dirt bike is two hundred and fifteen pounds. That's pretty good. Yeah. So that's what I figured, but it does vary by motor size. But they also strip dirt bikes down to make them whatever. Um, Regardless, I just you know, I couldn't get over the. Has he ever worked out before? Because 
You're saying it, a lot of sentence it fragments. Just, it, this really threw me for a loop. Like, it I didn't know how to is. take it because even when, like, Leroy was asking him what he was doing, he was talking about how he normally does, like, a thousand of these every morning and la di da di da And, like, he, he talked about it. It, maybe it was in his confessional that he said this, but it was at the same same time. Um, he he made it sound like, yeah, I'm this really super fit dude that works out all the time. I mean, and this is what shape. I do. He's in shape, but I mean, like he we saw him on the treadmill a couple times, so he runs, and that may be how he keeps his his shape. But the other workouts were, I mean. I've done similar workouts, but like actual twice as much movement. And like, I know doing exactly what he did, you wouldn't break a sweat for 30 minutes. Um, so I'm wondering if he even really knows how to properly do that stuff. Well, it was just, it was a really bad look, especially in a house like this where all the guys are ripped and, incredible shape to me he just came off as a guy who's just like genetically just always been like an athlete and in shape and whatever and i don't know he when i heard that a guy from america's got talent's gonna be on the show i was like this is either gonna be a does and also that he was a singer not because you can you can do other things in america's got talent that he was a singer on america's got talent i was like this guy is either gonna be one of the biggest like flops we've seen or uh, he's gonna surprise a lot of people, and I never got the feeling from him that oh, this guy's gonna turn some heads. Like, I don't know. He, he this. I mean, I'm not gonna say he's he, Shailene because we didn't cut out his whole birthday. Easy, easy <laughs> now. Um, I, he he did have a, little, a few more camera moments than her, but basically, after all the whole workout thing, Nani, Cam, and Nicole, which is interesting to look back on now, um, they're in a room together. They're basically just talking and talking about how they would never switch partners. Um, but then also Nani was like, I don't know if I trust Kyle because he doesn't take things seriously. And I want to be a real competitor. That what? And I was like, well, you've never been that. Well, she specifically points out Josh. Yeah. 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 It's is, weird. I, was, she, I, I asked you guys aloud. I said, what world is she living in? She She talks about Kyle like he's not good enough to be her partner. Kyle made a final his first season. And was in the military. And he's really good in eliminations. Uh, did he beat Theo or did Theo beat him? And it was like Nick and Nick. Theo beat him. In War of the Worlds 2. Yeah, okay. Theo it, it was beat close. Him. Which, Theo's an Olympian. Yes. And it was uh-huh. like, they, they just had opposite strategies. They went One went heavy first and then light and vice versa. Yeah. Uh, carrying those things. Like, Kyle, I, I do think Kyle is a guy that people underrate because they just like, oh, it's just, he's the funny... Guy who will lie to everyone in the house, he's which like he is. The, he 100% is. Everybody sees him as the house goofball. But I, he's a strong competitor. He's the stronger teammate of him and Nani. Oh, 100%. I, I think that's not even debatable. At this point in their careers, looking back, like, Nani is as middle-of-the-road challenge-wise as I could think of. And Kyle is kind of there, but I would give the edge to him. To me. I mean, it's I like I he's know. upper middle class. Um, he had a, a whole like um, like villain vibe going on tonight with his like white turtleneck and white jacket. I really liked it. I I, I think I said it last week. I really like Kyle's like fashion style. There this may, season, there may or may not be some fantasy points involved in that turtleneck. Oh, okay, just a little tease. I don't know there. whose team he's on. Who's he's on? Yes, he's on mine. mine. <laughs> uh, so uh, I just I think he looks really good. Right after that, Dang speaking, man. let's you know, let's transition from that. Speaking of, looks really good. We just get hot nom for like five minutes. By the way, just I in- coined that term. I did. I I said hot nom, uh, and then two seconds later, you're like, I just wrote down hot nom. You oh, you are living in a dream world. I am. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for agreeing. <laughs> I had written that down way before you had said anything because everyone was just like just watching him, and then everyone's like, "You know what? He's is what, is what he is." He's in fact, Wes said, "Nom's hot." Like it's just yeah, know, that's not an original thought. He's probably one of the prettiest people in the house. He's probably one of the prettiest people alive. And speaking of, yeah, I... 
<laughs> Speaking of that, for anyone who's interested, uh, we started following all these people, obviously, since the new season started. Oh, I thought you were going to tell everybody I was single. No, he started an OnlyFans. <laughs> everybody I don't know what's on it. I don't know if it's just workout stuff or if it's pictures, but he is he is a fitness model, so I would assume there's some stuff happening there. Do you want to tell everybody I'm single? No. <laughs> uh, okay. with, with the hot nom, we also get horny Lolo, and uh, I mean she's just she's just putting it all out there. I mean let's it let, it made me it made me uncomfortable. <laughs> She's like, I want you to remember what this looks like before I put clothes back on. No, and- she she was in a bikini and, and got out of the hot tub and she she said <laughs> she said, Remember this under the sweats. Okay. I'm sorry I didn't phrase it exactly the same, but it is the oh same meaning. No, it was just that, that is- this is easily my favorite thing that happens on the pod is when you say something and because you didn't say it specifically to how because I know she's got notes on exactly yeah. how they said it. I know she does. Because you didn't her, say it exactly how they said it. Her it's not phrasing, right. Her phrasing is what <laughs> is what bothered me. You hit me. Um, her, her, I don't know if like this is how she normally flirts, but I'm so- it was it was a weird scene, and I uh, didn't like well, it. Well, Nam kind of liked it. It's it, I, I don't know why. Listen, I mean, she's an Olympian. They're elite athletes. She's in good shape. She is yeah, in good shape. I just don't. I don't know. She's cr- she's kind of she's crazy. Like we haven't honestly seen it much this season, but we know from. Seeing her on other TV stuff. On a Champs Versus. Well, not even that. Apparently on Big Brother, she was nuts. But um, So we know that's coming at some point. It's got to come out. We also know she has talked about openly being a virgin and... Waiting until marriage. This was the most tempted she's ever been. And now we know, we know why, because we know who her partner is. Um, <sighs> so uh, right during this or after this something we get uh, The Cure playing um, Just Like Heaven which again another 80s song which Bill Simmons and Jacoby talked about uh, I, I like it I like throwing the 80s new wave stuff in here uh, we had Tears for Fears we've had The Smiths we've had The Cure um, you know I, next week I don't, we're going to get like the Thompson Twins or yeah, who knows like some Brett Michaels throw in there my namesake mm. shout out to Watching Heads Rock of Love we did watch through all of Rock of Love season one. We finally got uh, through it. So, uh, you know, before we get into this next daily, uh, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. And we are back. And the daily, which again, they are calling missions very specific because it's spy themed, which was like we said last week, the the old term that they used back in the day. Um, this one's actually called Ice Spy. Witty. Cute. Did you ever have those books? Like, check them out from the library, the Ice Spy books? I did all the time. No, but wasn't there a, an Eddie Murphy movie? It was a remake of a movie from, like, the 70s. Him yeah. and uh, Owen Wilson. Wilson. That's a good movie. What a way to bring it back around. Back to the Wilson brothers. I liked that movie. I don't know if I ever actually saw it. Uh, I don't bad. think I ever I, saw I it. I think it's based on a TV show that Bill Cosby was the Eddie Murphy role. Rest in peace. <laughs> he's not Cosby's dead. But not dead. He, oh, he's not? No, no, but he's done a lot of bad things. He's in jail. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. So he's dead to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, uh, we find out CT can't play because Compete. he doesn't... He does, okay. <laughs> oh, it's, my God. It's, oh my it's God. not a board game. They literally, I think, said, CT, you can't play today. And it's also, not a board game. it is the same exact thing Jake was just talking about. Oh, Han, you are you, on you, one tonight. When you when you when you say he can't play, it makes it sound like you're talking about a toddler that got in trouble and can't hang out with his friends. I'm, we've been doing this for two and a half years now. I'm pretty sure you've made the comment about <laughs> playing in a daily. Yes, and it's this whole thing hundreds is of a, times at this a point. game. Like everyone but says, tonight, it's the nature of the game. Tonight, he's not playing. <laughs> he ain't playing. No one gets to play. Oh, hey, and you're you're all right. You know that. <laughs> uh, so one thing which I think is going to get challenged. I mean, uh, fantasy points is after they tell CT he cannot compete. 
Thank you. Uh, they they show Nelson, and I paused it and rewound it, and I was like, Nelson has his helmet on backwards. And yeah. uh, he 100% did, but in the next shot, he didn't. So someone on production is like, uh, turn it around. Um, it always drives me crazy when they put the helmets on backwards for some reason, because it's not hard. No, like, it's not. It's shaped in a way that... If you put it on the wrong way, it looks like it's going to cover your eyeballs. Also, it it's going to feel weird. Yeah. Um, you know, big old double O Nelly T or whatever he says. Double Nelly T. Uh, he, uh... <laughs> this is what he coined himself. <laughs> um, if, like you, three, if, if you add like the double times. O, it, it sounds... It sounds like, more like, like it came from Mission Impossible. That is like that's, <laughs> no, the, that's the that's the that's a different that's franchise. The thing. But that's a different franchise too. Mission Impossible. Oh, it's not 007. I know. <laughs> She's right. You, you said it right. I know. We were talking about Tom this Cruise is, earlier, and that is, threw me off. This is three times in what five minutes now. <laughs> I can't keep track. <laughs> hey, speaking of Nelson, he. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just I had a note, and I don't want to pass it. He he had a confessional right before the daily started. After they s- fixed his helmet, he said, "Your boy has became a excellent swimmer this season. Like he has been practicing I don't, on the off season. I didn't see anything yeah, I like, I don't in the daily that showed. that showed him Fessy proving and, that. Fessy and Wes were in the lead, but b- before we get into that, um. We we get a, a, a like a three shot of Wes and Natalie and then Nicole and Nicole is wondering how they're going to move the ice through the water because <laughs> it's heavy and Wes is like ice floats and she's what and he's like there's ice literally floating out and he's like have you never had a drink with ice cubes in it like ice floats and. You know, we got some we got some more things to talk about when with uh Zanata. with Nicole in Peter a little Butter. bit. Um, I do think the comedic timing on this season is spot on and I think it is thanks to Wes, Devin and CT and Kyle. Like those yes. four are bringing a lot of personality. And imagine when Nelson starts tuning in. We haven't gotten We haven't gotten much I know. Nelson like yet. I that, have that's been That's why the helmet was so awesome. I was like there it is. Yeah. There's that that charm we love. We've been lacking. Yeah. Um so uh they start Wes and Fessy are in the lead of everyone. And then, like, Gabby and Leo are, like, not even halfway there while everyone's climbing up on the boat. It's like they were trying to will themselves to float to the boat. I don't know what was going on. It was her It was her that he was kind of hanging back with her is what it seemed. Um, but she's a, a trainer or something. Like she, She's a personal trainer. Again, like, I, I don't know. These that pe- doesn't necessarily mean she can swim. These people know, like, there's going to be swimming involved in the challenge. Yeah, but, like. Do they, though? Unless you're an idiot, like they all know what's happening at some point. Yeah, but I like some of these people come on the show from other shows and haven't watched this show before. Then they're an idiot. But swimming in cold water, I gotta say, like it's it's different. But it's it's miserable. Yeah, yeah. And we see eventually. I can't remember who it was. Again, I'm keeping fantasy notes. Michi. Here. Michi had to be Fessy. He just locked up. Yeah. Just, Fessy brought him to the shore. So you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's right in line with the great Polly. <laughs> you know? uh yeah wes and natalie are out in first and they're, i mean that yeah great i know <laughs> they're they're killing everyone as far as like on the the physical side of things um but then everyone starts just ganging up on them they're the first team out and then in a very dumb move they're already out and then leroy puts another kill thing in their st- thing and Wes is like you're an idiot like what are you doing but he, he's like go ahead go on let's 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 do it um I did not keep track of who went out in what order because there's way too many people matter. at this point um Teresa and go. Jay take shots at Leo and Gabby and then Wes and Natalie are the first team out Nelson and Amber is that his partner the Amber from are you the one yes I know Nelson was the next team out um and I, I didn't get the rest of the order. Yeah, so, well, in the midst of all that is what Jake was referring to. Uh, Michi just freezes up at some point, like, literally. And, like, Wes is out there playing lifeguard duty because he's out of the game. And, like, he just starts yelling, like, Michi needs a medic, Michi needs a medic. And then Fessy... Uh, Becomes a lifeguard. Literally, like, 
rush but then Wes and someone else like go over to him like with the medic team and are like checking him out and like we didn't get an update from that really like I'm i assume- guess he's okay i'm assuming just because he's a smaller guy that maybe the cold just got to him he didn't even have another confessional did he not uh-uh. I don't think we even saw him again. Um, but in, I didn't. Anyway, yeah. he uh, he he's out. They're DQ'd. And... Totally knocked him out of the episode. <laughs> Did that cold <laughs> yeah. water. They went home. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, so then Anissa and Fessy went against outright just because no one played against them. It's weird. Yeah. So once once the outlying teams were taken out and the, the main teams in that main alliance were still in... They were afraid to take any shots at each other, so they literally stood there holding their kill pills, just staring at each other. Yeah, I like. I don't think this was a thing where they're like, you know what, Anissa and Fessy already got blood on their hands. We need to let them make the decision. I think they were all just like, kind of scared of Fessy, and uh, they they let him win again, and so. Which is great for them because they know that they're going to get to see everyone's votes again, and they know that no one else knows that. Let me say this. So, and I'm 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 making this point to jump a little bit ahead, mm-hmm. but we don't have to stay a little bit ahead. But, dude, Fessy's already really good at this game. Oh, yeah. Not even just like as a physical specimen, but just like when him and Anissa are talking in that. Uh, I don't even deliberation. They, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's just. To have a good, as good a grasp on this game as he seems to have already, yeah, dude. I said that to you guys. He pays attention. I, I said I don't know why he got like the dumb jock vibe on apparently Big Brother because we didn't watch it. I was like, he understands like intricacies of this specific game that a lot of people don't pick up on for a long time. Like he he the whole thing with Wes and all that when everyone's basically putting the dirty work on them. Like oh, we're gonna make Fessy vote him in again. And he's like, I don't have an alliance with any of these people. Like, why should I do their dirty work? Mm-hmm. And so we'll, we'll come back to that. But He's really observant. Uh, he, I will say he's not the most lively. He's, he's a really nice guy. We interviewed him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Teresa at one point said that he, he takes part, starts taking his shirt off, and that's when he gets a personality. Um, I, I don't think he's quite on that level, but, uh, you know, he's not he's not Kyle, and he's not, you know, those type of people. But we talk about watchability, right? Yeah. And, like, sure, he doesn't have really much of a personality, just from what we Compared see. Compared to, for, like, for, the big person For entertainment purposes. Yeah. and But he is arguably the best competitor on the show right now. In an athletic competition, he is, if he's not the favorite, he's top two. So, yeah. when you're that... You don't need to be the most lively individual. You're, I, you're, I agree. You're fun. To, you're you're a spec a spectacle to watch. Just compete, right? Yeah. When you're this good, he's not shown that he is anything that we're like. Oh well, we wish we had this guy on instead. Like Fessy is insane competition. I will say, I think he backed out tonight when he should have gone down. Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts on uh, this when we get to it, but. Uh, after they get back to the house, uh, Kyle, for whatever reason, tells Wes he's going in. He's like, I think that's what the house is going to do. And uh, then out of nowhere, I mean, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Joseph starts saying he wants to go against Wes. Yeah, so I my note was after TJ called out everybody for letting Anissa and Fessy win. Yeah. Um. AG, AGT guy comes to some of the guys and says he wants to volunteer for elimination versus Wes if Wes is going in. Yeah, which on one hand, I guess he's like, oh, well, you know what? No one knows who I am. I got to make a big splash. I'm, but like, they're not even treating Wes the the rookies. They're not they're not treating Wes like, oh, he's a big name. That's why I got to swing for him. They're just like, I don't like him. I got to get him out of the house. And it's yeah. like, uh. Listen, Wes isn't what he used to be, but he also he he made the final on still the hardest final we've seen after being off for like five years. Yeah, they had to hook people up to IVs in that final. Yeah, it was mandatory halfway through the final to take an IV, and we've never seen anything like that. And so he wants to go in. Big T is very confused, but then she kind of realizes that oh, this might be a good thing because I don't like this guy. And uh Nelson tried to talk him out of it for a minute there. 
if Nelson is trying to be the voice of reason in your life... That should tell you, hey, maybe I need to think about this. Yeah. Jake, have you watched that Dr. Phil clip yet? No. Why? It's good. It. Um, it. So, <laughs> uh, at this point, Wes is out there with Fessy and... Corey. Nelson. And, and I'm getting there. And Corey. <laughs> and CT. And uh, they're all talking, and Wes... Basically starts groveling for a job, and he's like, "Let me be part of your team. I'll be the janitor, or whatever." He's like, "And if you want, I can be the CEO, and I can do all this." And they're like, <laughs> "You went, you went from one position to another very quickly." And again, more of that comedic timing. Uh, at this point, though, CT does say, "I kind of need to distance myself from West because he's got a lot of heat on him right now." And CT's in a in a weird like limbo state where he doesn't have a partner, so he can't compete. And uh, he also knows that there was a lot of heat on them because him and Ashley had won. He also knows that now only Wes, Darrell, and him are the winners. And most of these people have never done seasons with Darrell. And so I think Darrell may fly under the radar. On... I think he has so far. I think people have forgotten that he's there. I think him and Amber B are a solid team that are going to, like, you're going to look up and be like, oh, these guys are here and they're going to take somebody out. Um,. But uh, after that, we get to what I'm uh, going to affectionately call the Bubble Club. It's their, like, dome where they go to hang out and party because they can't go out anywhere because we're in a pandemic. Yeah, it's like 20 feet from the house. This this season is going to be very strange Look, reflecting on in, like, you know, five, ten years, something like that. Because, like, it's filmed in the middle of a pandemic. They can't go out. I will say... One smart thing production did, because they can't control it in the other places they go, there's no music playing in the actual club they're in. Their mics are crystal clear. There's no subtitles. There's noise because people are talking, but they also don't have to worry about licensing. They don't have to worry about drowning anything out. And so all the music that you hear is added in post. I didn't realize yeah, that. Their mics are way too clear for music to be coming through. God, you're such a tech. And look at you. That's kind of weird to think about, though. Like, I, being there and not having any music. They're just hanging out. They're just hanging out and drinking. Because, like, if you go back and watch, like, tonight's thing, and then go back and watch any other season where they're out, they're all yelling, and yeah. they're in each other's ears, and they're subtitles. These, Jay's like, let me do an impression for you that everyone around me can hear. And I was like, that's really smart. I was like, because they're going to get great audio and great conversations out of this. And then they can just put whatever music they want behind it. So, uh, in the club, they uh, we find out Lolo wants some more of Nam, but apparently Nam's like a blank brick wall or whatever. He's carved out of stone, which makes him perfect, but also emotionless. They're trying to get her to go over to him, and she won't do it. And they're like, well, he's not coming to you. <laughs> and Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's a whole weird thing. And then after everyone's back out of the club... Wes, Lolo, Anissa, and Teresa are all just watching Nam change in a closet. Well, did you did you catch at the club where Nani goes up to Fessy and tries telling her how she regrets making Kyle her partner? Uh, I, I didn't even write that down because she had already said earlier she's regretting Kyle. Yeah, she said that in a confessional, but she actually came to Fessy and said that she regretted it and talks about how he's not taking the game seriously and then Again, and then she world? she hints that she's gonna pick him as her partner well, yeah. to see how he would feel about it. Yeah, that's like the most it's like, you know what, if I had to play basketball, would I pick LeBron James or would I pick uh Shelvin Mack? I was gonna say Raymond Felton, we're real close. <laughs> we're well, we, very close. We have a real uh We've seen Shelvin Mack play right down the road from us. Yes, uh, um, not a fun watch. No, and it's it's like yeah, of course you're gonna pick Fessy if you have the chance to. Uh, I I was like, if she gets hooked up with Fessy down the line, I think this is gonna be her best shot at, at winning the championship. And uh, so then they watch Nam change, um, and he has like a bag for his belts, and then he doesn't have his pants off, and his he's like those are coming. And then he does take his pants off. He has a huge, like, full thigh leg tattoo. He has a I big he leg. Was going a different direction. He has a he has a he big has a muscular thigh. Muscular Ooh. wiener. Oh man! Stop it! Oh, Stop! Uh, this is a children's podcast. Here's oh, kids, we'll talk, kids, kids say wiener. We will kids talk love about to say wiener. Yeah, when I was like his five washboard years old, abs. 
hey, and his really big arms. When I was when I was a kid, like five or six years old, you know, things would happen, right? <laughs> I'd be like, what? We'd be out on the playground. I'd be like, oh man, he hit me in the wiener. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> That's funny. When you're, it's still funny. Like we're thirty, and it's still funny yeah. if we were out somewhere and he's like, "Man, he hit me in the wiener." Yeah. You two are idiots. Ain't nothing funnier than a wiener joke. <laughs> so you got wieners on the brain. Uh, so this is this is to me the funniest part of the season so far. Is like we were just watching, and then like it shows Nicole. I don't remember who she's talking to. I don't know. <laughs> But then I, I was legitimately like, I have no idea what she is saying right now. And then it cuts to Devin, and him and Kyle are in like the quietest room in the house. They just he, sit in silence. And he's like, I don't know what my partner is ever saying. And is well, what's funny is like, they're clearly like, to me, it, it made me think they were both kind of in their own little world because he he said Kyle's name first. <laughs> yeah, so he like, was like, Kyle. It's like they were zoned out, and yeah. then he's like, Let me tell you something. <laughs> yeah. It, it was this. This was an example of that perfect comedic timing, and the two of them paired together. It, it just made it a moment of television perfection. I will say, with this season, the editing and the the direction on the show has been spot on because that was a hundred percent. Someone in that edit bay was like, "Let's let's have a hard cut from her just rambling to like dead silence," and then Devin's like, "Kyle." I don't know what my partner is ever saying. And it's just like, that is perfect timing, like, comedy-wise. We and laughed out loud. It was so funny. And I, I think it might be one of the funniest moments I remember from the challenge, just because of how it built, and then just dead cut. Yeah. And, like, that's comedy right there. And I was like, man, that's... Solid. Also, like, lots of nice, like, little transitions and glitch effects and things like that happening throughout the season. Um, but comedically, this was amazing. Yeah, and, and like... Uh, I'll say, like Devin, we interviewed Devin. Like he was a lot of fun. We, uh, argued, he's great. Honestly, it may have been our most controversial interview, and we've interviewed Polly at the height of Pollyness with Be- Jake. Oh uh, yeah, it's not people, hot lot. people, legitimately. It was early on in the podcast. It was like thirteen episodes in. People legitimately were like, "I will never listen to Devin on anything" because it was at it was right after the bananas and him blow up. Yes, and I was like, Devin's really Devin is single handedly. The reason why I gave Are You the One People a chance because I was like, I like this guy. This guy's funny. He's not a good competitor at the time. I was like, but uh, I was like, you know, at least he's funny. And again, it that was it was a great interview. I really enjoyed it. I think if you gave Devin and Kyle their own podcast, that's money. Oh right there. my gosh, I would pay for that. I I, I would pay money. I, I get. I think that's the way to go. Is something like that. Um, but we uh. After that whole thing, uh, we get Devin uh, then saying he wants to control the house vote because Devin knows his strengths. Wes knows Devin's strengths. Like they're they're very similar as far as they want to control things politically. I think Wes is for sure the better competitor. Um, but uh, you know, a puzzle thing like we saw we saw Devin take out bananas, how whatever season that was, and that still counts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't they didn't void it. Um, Kyle also plots to jet to Devin. That he wants to put in Big T and AGT uh, into the next elimination, or for like the house vote to try and turn votes. Yeah, because they don't they don't know that Fessy and Anissa can see this. So he's like, "I'm gonna do this, and then just tell them that I voted this way." And he's like, "Who cares?" It's like I can tell them whatever I want. It's a secret vote. Yeah, he he said about Fessy. He's like, he's not gonna know. Yeah, and uh, again, Kyle's great. Um, this is when Big T. Starts having her thing where she's like, I don't want to go in. Her and Joseph have this weird breakdown where they're like talking to each other at like the kitchen table. She She's trying to talk to him, trying to get him to understand that, you know, maybe your version of politicking might not be you know, everybody's cup of tea, but she's trying to get him to understand the importance of at least socializing with other teams. And she's frustrated because he doesn't seem to want to do that. He wants to stay by himself and, and stick kind of like as a loner. And she feels like, you know, they've just been kind of like dangling out on their own. 
Well, okay. And like, she, like she's the build up to this. She's been progressively more and more frustrated with him. And so with, at this talk, she's trying to, to get him to understand where she's coming from and to open up to her. Um, but they start getting into it, and that's when other people in the room start to kind of listen into the conversation. Jake's got something he wants to say. I'm going to say this, and our resident Big T fans aren't going to be happy with it. <laughs> Joseph is more entertaining than uh, Fessy. Uh, you Fessy. Think? Big T. <laughs> Good God. Uh, so here, here's, here's, here's what I'll say. It's uh, What would you say, Ann? What would you say? You, I, like you said Fessy. I was like, okay, you think? Yeah. I don't know where I was at. Okay, so, It's after midnight here. So here, here's the thing. Big T does not know much about this game at all. And at one point, she's like, "You know, I just want to get. I want to get to the final. I've been here for three seasons." And I was like, "Okay, that's not very many." But um, I was like, "She doesn't know a lot about this game, especially politically." But she knows more than Joseph because he's clueless. And it reminded me of John Mulaney has a joke where. He talks about how when you're a little kid and you have a babysitter, you always think they're like 25 or whatever. And you find out like, oh, they're like 13. And they're like, that's like putting a horse in charge of a dog. Like, it, and that, that's what Big T and Joseph are. They're like, she's a horse and he's a dog, but they're both like trying to play chess. And like, neither one of them really know what's happening. But she knows a little bit more, I guess, because she's bigger. I don't know. <laughs> she's bigger. But even when like, you know... She's given reason to like pop off or something. She that shouldn't do anything. Like this was my point. Like she had an opportunity to like blow up. Yes. Right. Nothing. I I will say she is to me one of the more confounding like people as far as like the amount of people that seem to like legitimately love her versus what we see. Yeah. And it's nothing again. Like, again, she may be the nice person. Like she does seem like she's very nice, but like, what the, are we missing? What is it that we're not seeing? I think you're looking at it from the wrong perspective. I think it's like, what's wrong with you people out there? <laughs> <laughs> we're clearly all on the same page. <laughs> no, I, I'm. I feel like I got a good grasp on this. I think she's a super sweet girl. Yes, nice. Yes, she's you know, super cute. Easy to get along with. Yes. Not cut out for television. Not cut out for the this challenge. Time, we we established sure. she yeah. would work on Entertainment Tonight last <laughs> yeah, week. I forgot about that. Yeah. Not this. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, it's it's just like, going back to your favorite example, Anastasia. Yeah. She got involved in things. She mixed it up on her two days and on the show. She, listen, uh, I'm glad you said that. Thank you. My argument last <laughs> season was that Anastasia was more entertaining than Casey, which... He has, could even carry over into this season. Casey was nowhere to be seen tonight. Um, but the same applies to Big T. The reason I go to bat for Anastasia so much is because in her one episode ever on the challenge, she caused more ruckus and more problems than either of these two have in five combined seasons. Yeah, she, she hooked up with CT, then she hit him. And then, uh, I don't even remember whatever else, but it was just like... She passed out in her elimination. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know. I just, I just I forgot. Everything. <laughs> she, like, every every avenue she could have, like, made an impact in, she did. That might be one of the most, like, dramatic one and dones of all time. Literal one episode and done. <laughs> I've never seen her again. Um, Everybody thinks I'm just being goofy. I'm telling you. Nobody has made. We wouldn't. Rem- There's more- a lot of people that've been on the show that have done one season that we don't remember until we go back and be like, oh yeah, but like she did kind of solidify herself in our brain. She's this- burned into your memory. Th- this isn't just even one season. This is one episode, one, and she has made more of an impact. And by the way, hooked up with CT at like the height of his hot hot CT. Yeah, yeah. hot hot crazy angry crazy. T. She, also, she also like was kicking CT, slapping CT. Like, I mean, she was so mad. The girl made her mark. Like, she just did. So after that, yeah, again, uh, I, I do still think you were asking the wrong question. It's not what's wrong with us. It's what's wrong with everyone else. No, I. Regardless, maybe it will change because after no. their little blow up, she. I shook my head. 
but Jake yeah. said no. A- after their little blow up, she says that she's now plotting to divorce him. She said it's like which in- Jake missed somehow. Yeah, she she said uh, she said it. She feels like they're in an unhappy marriage where they don't speak and they don't sleep together. Which obviously because he's married. Is um, he married? Yeah, I didn't know that. He said he's he's got. Kids at home. I thought that was Leo had kids. No, I didn't hear. I didn't remember any other rookie saying that. I think he's got kids at home too. Um, I completely missed that. I don't. He may. He may. Regardless, she she made the analogy that they're in an unhappy marriage, which I, that kind of seems right. They seem to dislike each other stronger and stronger with each passing moment. Um, so she says she's now plotting to divorce him, and she goes to her little Brit friends. Um, Gabby and Liv and I think that's it. No, who's the one with the blonde hair? The blonde curly hair. Is that the other Nicole? There's, there's Gabby two, or, and there's or Liv. There's two Ambers. Two Ambers. But it's Amber's one of the, not British. One of the Ambers is Am- Amber B, which is from Big Brother, who is Jarrell's partner, is not British, and Amber. M, which is from Are You the One, is also not British. Okay, well, it's the it's the blonde Amber who's not British, but the other two Brits are there. Yes. Big T's a Brit, um, so Big T goes to to those girls and tells them basically what AGT said to her, and they're like, "He's awful," and she's like, "I kind of want to get rid of him," and they're like, "Okay," so that does some things. Yeah, I mean, again, she. Big T, which, again, the reason why I said Jake missed it is because going into, like, the actual elimination in the crater, he's like, pause it for a second. He's like, hold on. He's like, why? He's like, I was about to talk about how much of an idiot Big T is because she would get a better partner. And we're like, no, she actually did talk about that. Like, for all the things that we do say about her, like, she did realize that. Yeah. Um. And. uh. Well, was, I'm also divorced. If I hadn't mentioned that before on here, so I can't true. believe I didn't catch that. That is true. Mm. Shout out to my ex, my ex wife. <laughs> I feel like you do oh. this every episode. <laughs> oh, hope, hope she's doing well, man. Uh, so we do get Big T calling herself Double O Big T, um, and then we get into the deliberation, and it's where everyone. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> what just happened? To you? I thought, uh, you said deliberation, but I heard deliberation. <laughs> Did I, did, have you ever talked about it on the podcast? It's twelve forty five in the morning. Have you ever talked about it on the podcast? Um, <laughs> we had a friend that Hannah doesn't know, but Jake and I know. Um, did friend, that just spark something? Yeah, friend of a friend. Who, Here we go. Um, not a nice enough guy. Not the. Do I know this guy? Per- yeah, you do. Okay. Um, and at one point, he looked at me and uh, our mutual friend Chris, who actually listens to this podcast, and. Uh, he was like, do you guys ever get uh, vegetables and insects mixed up? And he's like, not the things. He's like, just the words. <laughs> and I was like, no, man. Like, that doesn't who, happen. Who is this? I'll, I'll have to tell you off off, off mic. Off the uh, cuff. Whenever, whenever Hannah starts talking again, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll yeah. tell you what's going on. Uh, we get into the delivery. I don't want to say what it on mic. What is that supposed to mean, though? It means it'll give me a chance to say him so he can lean yeah, in and no. I can tell him. When you give it. When you give your next take, he's going to tell me about it. What yeah. a slight towards you. Uh, it the, sounded like one. The deliberation <laughs> gets going, and everyone is in uh, in the the like living, living room. room. Yeah, whatever it is, where Joseph was working out earlier, and I'm working uh, out. He uh, he just pipes up. He's like, "I want to go in against Wes," and it's like, "Well, neither one of you are in it for sure yet." Well, he and he he specified. If Wes goes in, and then Wes comes up, and he's like, ev- in his confessional, he's like, everybody wants to ride my coattails, la di da di da and I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. I did tell Jake off mic who it was, just for the record. Yeah, you jumped at the... I wasn't really planning on saying much right there. Oh, who wins that never been? <gasps> oh! Zachary! ba boom ba Hey, you know, no. you know what I haven't, uh-uh. you know what I haven't said at all this whole season, dims to facts. Oh god, that's my yeah. catchphrase that okay. I never used. It's a t-shirt. Um. Anyway, Wes says that he basically wants to ride his coattails because he's the multi-time champ, and it's you true. know he wants to take shots at him I had in the order time to, to pull a hand right there to to get more. 
more clout or whatever. Um, Shit, but, we speak in exact terms here. Yes. But then uh, AGT, whatever his name is, he starts to kind of like backtrack, like almost like he's realized maybe he shouldn't have said something. Um, and then when he when he starts to backtrack, Natalie well, you, jumps you missed, in. You missed something. You missed where uh, people start talking about Wes being so rich and they want to get him out. And he's like, well, first off, it's like, I am extremely rich. Which, Darrell's like, well, no one that's rich says, says that they're rich. Which, by the way, I 100% agree with Darrell. And we, Except. We've talked about this many times. Uh, I don't know if on this podcast or in a Patreon podcast or whatever. Um, the people who are always the ones on social media talking about how great their relationship is, all that type of stuff, are almost always the ones that behind the scenes, it is like a garbage fire and they're trying to just project if you know like if i put it out there maybe it'll be right and the people that always talk the loudest i do agree with Darrell. typically don't like if you are really something you don't have to tell everyone going back to one of those tiktoks you watch tonight if you're an alpha you don't have to tell anybody oh, oh, um, i thought you so, were gonna say that uh, except except wes does understand timing and he knew that that was a good tension breaker and like well first of all i am extremely rich and it's like yeah that's funny and every, everyone's laughing. Everyone in the room. Yeah. Um, but Joseph... I bet you Beta Blocks has money. There's... We know he has money. You know he has money. You know, I I would assume so. I mean, the... He, he's, he is probably the biggest entrepreneur in a sense of anyone we've ever seen on the show because he's always got his hands in things. He, he has an incubation type thing where he, he, like, brings people in to develop apps and websites and whatever. He has his own Patreon where it's like twenty five dollars at minimum to be in. He he kills it on Cameo. He also uh, does. Uh, he launched an app last week. He also has a thing of like nutritional supplements for your brain. Like he is, he, he's got a lot of revenue. He's streams. on top of a lot of things. He doesn't need to do the challenge. I think he does it for the fun. Yeah, he likes to do the challenge. Um, but yeah, so so. Wes basically claps back or whatever, and then that's when, what's his name? Joseph. Joseph starts to backtrack, and then Natalie jumps in on him. And and where Wes was, like, sarcastic and kind of funny about it, like, hers was just factual. It and, was, and, like, I almost felt like she had fangs. Yeah, she was like, oh, well, out. if you want it so bad, just put yourself in and go for it. Like, don't, don't you know, wait for us and whatever. It's like, uh-huh. you, it's, do what you want. And she's like, you want to be in? Nominate yourself. And I was like, she could beat me up. Yes, like for sure. Um, so, like, after after she says that, you can kind of see Joseph kind of, like, sink back a little bit and kind of his gears are turning, but almost like he's a little afraid to say anything back to her. So, Wes kind of follows up and he starts trying to explain some things and... Joseph cuts in and Wes is like, let the multi-time winner, or tells him the the multi-time winner is speaking. Uh, multi-time champ. champ. Hand. Multi- yeah, multi- yeah, get it right. Okay, oh, multi-time champ. We both knew it. Is speaking. He's like, you don't get crazy? to talk right now. You and I are like locked in, <laughs> yeah. right? And then. I like that you winked if, at him. If, if, if one of us is wrong, we're both wrong. Mm-hmm. But if we're right, if one of us is right, we're both right. No, you're both just wrong all the time. We were right on that one. He said champ. He did say champ. Okay. He said champ. Well, I, I said champ a second ago, too. You know what? If you're going to correct us, Han, then you better get ready for the fire. You know what? Don't step into the kitchen if you ain't ready to mm, listen. Where are you going with this? What's the? How do you finish that? It's, it's, to stay it's, out. it's stay out of the kitchen if you can't take the heat. What, oh, what, what are you saying? The oven. It's uh don't don't come into the kitchen um while unless the you... oven is a glitching. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Don't okay. come into the kitchen unless your oven's glitching. That's not what it says. <laughs> yep. Uh yep. so anyway, uh yeah, he throws it right back. Again, you can kind of feel when the, the dynamic in the room starts turning. Yeah, because then Devin pipes up. Yeah, and Wes is like, No, 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 like I'm gonna I'm gonna go after this guy now because he, he is backpedaling and that then you have Devin and whatever. And then uh even Leroy chimed in, but it wasn't in like it wasn't in a way to like back Joseph up or anything. It was, it was just more like, Hey, um, yeah, but I, I did like that, that in the middle of all that, Devin piped up and he's like, I'm going to vote for you. Yeah. Um, uh, again, they're, they're going to stick together. Um, and so 
after that, everyone votes. Um, I felt like it was leaning towards um, Joseph and Big T, but you know, you never know because we do know some people are going to vote for West. You never know. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then they come back, and then Kyle just. Straight up lies to Fessy and Anissa. And Tori. And Tori is like, yeah, I voted for Wes. Don't tell him. And it's like, talk first of all, that's really funny that he just felt the need to do that. Talk about people you forget that are on the show. Like, totally forgot Tori. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, she's been really quiet you know? so far. Um, it's like Casey level forgetful. <laughs> <laughs> I I was amazed to see Leroy voted for Big T and Joseph. Against Cam, because Cam went yeah. the other direction. Um. And so, yeah, uh, it, it looked like at least 16 or more voted for them. I didn't count it, but uh, have. the compromise was Big T and Joseph. And Sefesi and Anissa go into their little bunker thing. And uh, this is where you were, you brought up earlier, Jake. Like, this is where we kind of see, like, Fessy understanding, like, the moves behind the moves. And, like, it's a lot of things people don't understand. He saw the people that voted for Big T and Joseph over and he's, Wes yeah, and Yeah, he was like, wait, wait, if you want Wes, he's like, why Why'd you not vote for him? Why are you wanting me to do your dirty work? He's like, I don't have any beef, beef with Wes. He's like, I think I can beat Wes in a final, which, like, I truly believe he thinks that. And I'm not saying he, he would or he wouldn't, but, like, physically, like, Fessy is a better athlete than Wes. Yes. I think that's not all that obviously goes into a final. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know if that's necessarily like the the right thinking. But like I like that he's like, wait, wait, I'm not going to just throw Wes in when it doesn't benefit me at all. Mm-hmm. Like he's like, I got to look out for right now him and Anissa. And uh, that didn't that didn't benefit them. And they knew Kyle had just straight up lied to yeah. him. Yeah. So he, Fessy realized all that and then looks at Anissa and then plots to strike a deal with Wes yeah. to keep each other out of elimination. Which we didn't see in this episode, except that when he threw in, ultimately, Kyle, he's like, Wes, you owe me one. And uh, I think Wes is... This, this could not have broke any better for Wes. Um, but they go into uh, the elimination, which is the crater or whatever, and... Immediately, when they kind of showed the overview, I was like, okay, there's a ring. I was like, there's something that's probably physical. I thought it was pretty obvious what this was. And yeah. Because Fessy, Fessy specifically said, if I see a pole or a hall brawl, like, I'm going in. And I'm looking down there, and I was like, there's a ring in the middle, and then there's three poles on each side. I was like... It's no puzzle. I was like, it is for sure pole wrestle, but with a ring, and then you got to, like, ring the things or something. It's going to be something along those lines, like... If you've watched the challenge for any amount of time, like you knew this was going to be some sort of like wrestling thing, but there may be a little twist at the end. I I don't know. I I think I think honestly, Fessy probably does regret not going in because um, I think he would have absolutely he would have Joseph. demolished him. And like when when I first saw the overview before. TJ gave any instructions or anything. I just wrote down this is a prime opportunity for Fessy to go in and get a skull. Not only that, he could have changed partners if he wanted yes. to. Yes, exactly, which he kind of wants to. Here, here's here's the only the, the reason why I will cut him some slack is one, it's only the second elimination, and we also have seen that they know one that there was a turn, a twist, the last elimination, but two they know that there's other twists that no one else in the house knows because they've been able to see some other things and they know that you can change partners and all this. So even though it did appear physical, I will kind of cut him a pass because this season is a season of last minute twists and enough to make you nervous all the time. Yeah. Even if you're like, I think I got this like 90%. It's like, well, what if the other 10% is, I got to rely on my partner to do something for me and what, like, I don't know. It's, it's not going to be that, but I think it was pretty obvious. It was, it was a physical thing. And, Plus, and, and I, Kyle called him out for it. I, I guess if they, if he and Anissa really want to hold their secret of knowing who voted for who, if he goes in, he's going to win. He will switch partners. There's no way he won't. 
he's got to think if he does switch partners, he's probably going to tell his new partner what happens during their deliberation time. And then he's got to think, well, Anissa may do the same thing with her new partner. Yeah, for sure. Um, like they, they're going to tell. They're going. I don't. I doubt this partnership lasts the entire their entire run of this this season. Um, before we do actually get into the other part of the elimination and then the fantasy and all that superlatives and all that, we are going to take another quick break, and we are back. Um, we uh, we're basically felt like we these podcasts are going long enough that our algorithm on our hosting in was like hey you need to take more breaks so uh you know what if you don't want to listen to the ads and the breaks uh join our patreon because they get them all ad free so um we get to the elimination and uh the one thing i didn't really think about in all honesty was they pick kyle and he says wes you owe me one and then votes in kyle and nani and at this point kyle truly doesn't know why he's voted in because they didn't say we know you lied to us, whatever. He's he, like, let me pick Kyle. He thinks they've just decided Kyle was that, that they have beef with Kyle. So when TJ had Fessy vote first, and as soon as he said Kyle's name, he Kyle gets upset, like takes a step away, comes back, waiting for Anissa's vote. He looks like he's going to cry. Like he's holding back, like maybe anger tears. Well, and then I think Nani at some point was like, yeah, it's, it's okay. And it's like, well, yeah, you know, you're not going into yeah. the elimination. She has nothing to lose. Also, if she did, she's going against Big T, which let's be honest, like Nani's favored yeah. against Big T. Um, I did think when Fessy and Anissa voted for Kyle, this was a really big eye opener to how fragile that main alliance was. And also, I mean, if you think about it, how much power Wes can get here. If Fessy is throwing him a bone and he takes it and they link up, I mean, Cam's going to be really upset with this vote. Um, Leroy is, I think he's disappointed, but also he didn't vote for Wes himself. He went against the, the vote that the rest of his alliance was supposed to do. So, I mean, I think, I think there's a major crack that just happened and... I, like I'm interested to see kind of how the tides turn. Also, I I still can't believe Fessy passed this up. I really I just I can't believe. I I, I think looking back, and I mean it did show him up top. He's like, well, can I go in now? And it's like, well, it's a little late for that. But um, I will say I did I didn't totally pay attention to everything you just said because my next note triggered me to look something up, and um, that yeah. is that Joseph pulled out a like Tupperware out of his like coat pocket of mustard. And, it looked like Dijon. And he's like, mustard stops cramps. He's like, I always carry mustard with me. And he, he said he takes a lick of mustard before every single competition. I've never heard that. So I haven't either. I've yeah. heard, I've heard pickle juice because it has electrolytes in it mm-hmm. uh, and things like that. I looked it up. That's what I was looking up. And, um, the first thing that I found was from tanker slay cryo, whatever mustard, contains acidic acid yellow mustard is the only kind of mustard documented to relieve nighttime leg cramps when the nighttime leg cramps occur take a teaspoon or, or two of yellow mustard the mustard should take effect almost immediately allowing you to sleep that doesn't sound accurate to me so then i scroll down and there's a there's an article from healthline and it's like does the mustard help with cramps currently no evidence supports mustard's ability to reduce or prevent leg cramps um, and this was from April of this year. I've never heard that. Some that may be a thing that people know about. I will say it doesn't look great coming from Mister Workout and America's Got Talent. And on top of that, Nom and Lolo, the two machines in this season, were flabbergasted at this. They couldn't understand or believe what he was doing. I, I think most people couldn't understand or believe. I know, but the Olympian and then the carved statue. I mean, how, we're on season 36. We've never seen anyone be like, you know what, I gotta get my mustard out. Yeah. And again, it did not look like yellow mustard. It looked like Dijon. Regardless, it's very, very bizarre. And kind of gross. I'd rather him just lather it on the back of his legs or something. <laughs> just put, soak just it in. Put it in the soul. Take Straight it, contact. Just, just scoop it right out of there. And just... Yeah. Um, I, I didn't get that. Maybe someone will jump in that's like a, a 
you know, nutritional therapist or something like that. Sports therapist. Yeah, somebody studying mustard out there. <laughs> yeah, mustard therapist. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Fessy said he regrets going down, but again, it, it is what it is. We knew what it was. We knew mostly what it was by looking at it, and uh, you know what? The only the only note I have about this, oh, Kyle just destroyed him. Like I knew after the first round, I was like, okay, in the trailer, it clearly showed Kyle throwing up in an elimination, and I was like, so either something bad happens to him and he gets hurt and it's like he's throwing up, or he like is in another elimination down the road and he's throwing up. Um, but we hadn't seen it yet, and then he wins the second round, and uh, then he just throws up everywhere. And I was like, there it is. I'm glad that that's done, because I knew Kyle was in an elimination where he threw up. And we got a really big close-up of it, and it I didn't know it was coming, and it really grossed me out. Doug, Doug looked loves, like motor oil. <laughs> Doug Love's movies always had a, a part where he was like, not for hermetophobes, which is people who uh, are afraid of watching other people throw up and he would always tell you if a movie had a part in it that was someone throwing up so this uh this episode is not for hermetophobes and uh yeah i uh kyle won i mean he just he, he it wasn't even close Mm-mm. like and kyle and, and joseph like on paper very similar size wise look to be very similar build wise see y'all said that not i i would venture to say Kyle's got at least 15 pounds of muscle on this guy. Kyle's really Kyle's tall, Kyle's and Kyle's, he's Kyle's really thick. Denser to, like, yeah. But, like, as far as just, like, build, they're, they're, like, if you saw him shoulder to shoulder, like, they're about the same size. Um, it's not like going against Jay or something no. like that. Um, but, like, yeah, I think Kyle, and I'm glad Kyle, like, decidedly beat him because, like, this guy, like, had like an air about him where he was like, and it came like, where did that come from? Where he, does he think he was he like? Got I got that? in an argument with Big T at the table, and now I'm a Terminator. And it's like nobody is. That's not how that me. works. I don't think he's gonna be back. Let's, no I mean, way. Do you think this guy's ever coming back on the show? I'd rather him than Big T. No way. Absolutely. Uh uh-uh. uh. I will. He, I, <laughs> he rubbed me the wrong way. I'm, uh-huh. I'm not saying that, but I will say. He did at least make a ruckus of some yeah. sort. I know, and like that's something way. that like production looks for he, when they he did. He was kind of pompous, and it was just like, what? Like he doesn't even have a background for anything for this. Like for anything. Like he wasn't on a he wasn't on a show like Survivor, or Big Brother, or whatever. He was on a talent show. But but give me the goofy, overconfident rookie, and you know over the, the the girl who doesn't offer anything it it wasn't i wouldn't even call what he was overconfident it was just full of himself and i i just don't like people that are like that but isn't that overconfidence <laughs> you didn't it's, say it right though. It, no it's <laughs> no. there's there's you can be overconfident and not be i'm not i'm not even saying that it's just it it to me it was just like i don't know where this guy all of a sudden got this like it's like he ran over like a boost up, and he's like, "Oh, I got all the confidence I need now." And it's like you've been not doing anything. Yeah, this I didn't. Time. I didn't see that last episode. It's because he was sleeping. <laughs> he was. I was That's wondering. Right. If, I was wondering if he was going to be asleep in the the bubble club again. He's goofy. Like he's just a goofy addition to this yeah. show. I, I, well, I when I saw on paper, I was like, "America's Got Talent." I was yeah. Like, what? Um. I. I hope that casting doesn't do that again. Make that mistake so, for the second time. Um. I liked that Kyle. One demolished, two Threw pu- up. puked, he, jumped up, asked for beer, was ready to go. He he, the old uh, coaching adage: he laid it all on the field, left it all on the field, Le- left, left it, it all out on the field. That's what I'm all of say. it. Uh, Nani said that that was all of his dinner. So, um, Darrell even said, you know, like like Kyle's like he, like he's the real deal. Like he's not somebody you want to go against. Like people like underestimate people him. sleep even, on Kyle and I CT, don't know why two, two of the greats, right? Even CT was like, I don't think people give Kyle enough credit. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I, I love Kyle so much. Um, I and, just do. And He's then, great. and then after all that, Kyle just starts calling out Fessy and he's yeah. like, you're things I can't say on here. Well, and- t- TJ afterwards, TJ looks at Fessy and asks him how he feels about, not coming down yeah. himself. And that's when Kyle goes off on him. He's like... Because Fessy's like, well, I would have. And he's like, no, 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 no. You knew what this was. He's like, you're afraid to come down just yeah. like you were last season. 
And uh, I think to an extent he's right. I, yeah, I, I I don't disagree with it. Um, but then they're like, "All right, Kyle, now you get the choice. Do you stick with Nani? Do you, for some reason, take Big T, or do you pick someone out?" And I told you guys, I was like, "He's gonna take Cam." I was like, "Take Cam." Why would he not? I was like, arguably the strongest female that you could choose from. Well, I guess I guess you could pick Natalie. I didn't even think about that. But he was like, he's like. I want to break up this alliance that's going on. Uh-huh. And he's like, I want Cam. And I was like, yes, like solid move. Um, and then Josh is dumbfounded. He said he was betrayed by everyone. Josh is always betrayed by everyone that, in his mind. One, that doesn't make any sense because that was that was Kyle's choice to do. Everyone was Kyle's in not in their alliance. It made sense for Kyle to take Cam to protect himself at least for a a hot minute um because she's not gonna throw themselves into things she's gonna try and protect their team as much as she well, can and he's already seen like she's made enough of a fuss that it literally put the two like champs or three champs actually at the time in the first elimination right and- like she's she's basically the ringleader of that alliance so it makes sense for kyle to take cam it would make less sense for him to take anyone else why it had nothing to do with josh so why was he upset yeah why I, is he ever upset yeah, and that, then that, and then he the he got paired with nani their best friends yeah and uh, and she like she had just talked about wanting josh as a what, partner what a over kyle pair. What a perfect pair to wear. Arguably the two most most paranoid people that have ever been on the show that think everyone is either out to get them or their biggest enemy. And uh, good for them. Maybe that's why they're best friends. Uh, and then so Big T goes to CT. And, and he was so excited. Mm, he wasn't. But he, it was the forced yelling, woohoo, yeah. yeah. And then he like, had like a Power Rangers post when he came down there. Uh-huh. I thought that was really funny. Uh, again, you got to make the best of it. Um, and so, I mean, that's, that's the end of the episode. Uh, Kyle, sw- Kyle took out a guy even when he was blindsided and then completely threw a wrench in the rest of the game. Everything. And so, uh, do you want to do the fantasy stuff first? Do you want to do the superlatives and then fantasy? Let's do it like we did last week. Right. Superlatives and fantasy. So, uh, for who smashed some heads, um, I'll go first. I never go first. That's I, not true. You go first like every, every. You you go first like every three to four weeks. Okay, so so that means I defer seventy five percent of the time. You to should one of you defer a hundred percent of the time to me. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna go with for who smashed some heads. I'm giving it to Kyle, man. He laid it all out there and uh, took care of a guy that I genuinely don't know why he was on this show. So that's mine. Yeah. Is he unanimous? I wrote I mean, down he, freaking Kyle. Is That was my answer. He's the easy one to give it to. Um, I, I could not not give it to him. You know, you could give it to Wes for the well-timed comedy tonight. Um, Although, Devin you know what? Wes, Wes yeah. for being rich. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's fine. Uh, for who got their head smashed, um, I'm going to go with... Uh, jo- it's Joseph, man. This guy is not even on the right show. It, uh, it, it doesn't even make sense why he wanted to go in, especially why he wanted to go against Wes, and then he got Kyle which was a better matchup and it's not even close. Like the guy got destroyed. He's not going to have any sort of, I don't think he'll be back on the show and what a way to go out. Mm. At at least at the end, he's like, well, maybe I didn't really know what I needed to be in this game or something along those lines. So, um, that's mine. Uh, I wrote cams Alliance. Kyle did shake that up. Well, not even just Kyle. Uh, I mean the whole house voting messed up. Uh, peanut butter. Nobody can understand what she's saying. And she didn't know ice floated. That's that true. That's that that two <laughs> solid things. Um, so, bef- do you want to do the songs too? Because we did. Yeah, that let's, yeah. let's just go ahead and That's knock that out. Part of it. Well, I'm going to go first. Uh, again, thanks to uh, Spotify's Discover Weekly. Uh, the band is The Sidekicks. The song is called Weed Tent. And uh, kind of like The Shins, but a little bit more upbeat. And. Uh, probably the only song i've ever heard that had 
references to uh, Stephen in the Bible getting stoned. So okay. that's oh, part wow. of the course, okay. which is uh, very strange. So I've never heard of a song include that. Well, you heard this song yesterday, so did I? Um, that's my pick. Uh, my song of the week. I told you guys I'm only doing Christmas songs for Double Agents and for Fresh Meat Recaps until after Christmas. So tonight's song is Christmas and Hollis by Run DMC. In Hollis? Christmas and Hollis. I don't know what Hollis means. Uh, this Hollis Queens. This group I just found uh, not, not too long ago. They're called Chief. Um, Chief Keef? Just Chief. Uh, they uh, they just released a single a week or two ago called Ain't So Bad. That's Ain't, bad grammar. Ain't So Bad. It's just chill, man. Just super chill music. I like it. What do you mean by chill? Like something you'd play in like a Panera? Would you play this in a Panera? I, yeah. Okay. Something if a I'm Panera si- would play? If I'm sitting down to like read or study. This is, okay, this so is that good, is chill music listening. then. Yeah. Easy okay. listening. Well, let's let's get into. Uh, I'm gonna have to pull my keyboard out. We uh, let's freaking go. I think I'm gonna rack up all the points. We, we let's do a quick recap um, of the fantasy segment. Um, I'm currently in first place with 35 points. Hannah's in second with 30. Jake is in last with 25. And um, basically, the big winners were last week: Natalie with 50 for the elimination win, and then Fessy um, 25. And Anissa had thirty. Anissa had thirty. So th- those were the top scores for last week. And I, everyone else on my team was negative or zero that did anything. But Natalie pulled it out for me. So Jake had the big loss with negative twenty five for Ashley going home. Um, but uh, I'm going to have a lot of negatives this week. I know that for sure. So let's let's get into the scoring. And uh, again, don't look at my thing up here. We all have to decide democratically yes. what the scoring yes. should be, and then I'll make notes of it. Um, you know, so. Starting off, uh, gotta give points to Wes for getting picked by Natalie to remain uh, her teammate. Solid five points there. I agree with that. So for Wes, for Wes, yeah. Let me find him. There he He's is. On... Oh, I thought you had him, Zach. I did not. Jake got him. Okay. Um, I think CT should get a solid ten here for being the first rogue agent. I agree. Yeah, I think that's cool. That's so, it's a whole yeah. new concept for us. He's on my team. That's why I, I know. I also, but I, I agree with that. I also have to deduct five from CT oh. for groveling. He did grovel. He did grovel. But so did Wes later on. Yeah, but we're not there yet. Uh, All right. So, um, I, I feel like we have to deduct points from CT too for being afraid of commitment. For Cam. Yeah, no, from CT. But, I mean, with, with Cam yeah, is what I meant. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think it's a solid negative five again. This is exactly what happened last week with <laughs> CT. He had plus five, negative five, plus ten, minus ten, and then he ended up at zero for the week. Yeah. I I wouldn't, I don't know. I think the one negative five for groveling is enough. Being afraid of commitment is I, a real thing. I, I know. I, but he's married. I, I dealt with that for years, but... <laughs> Wow. The thing is, I I think I think that was part of his groveling. It was all in the same segment. I will I will say that, and I'm trying to be. It was like, in the same conversation. I'm to be fair about it. So you want to eliminate that? I I, I, just I wanna... think I think just the one negative five for groveling. It encompasses all of it because I okay. I I think his his commitment um, sentence was it was part of the groveling. I would like I would like to give negative ten to Josh for thinking he has a rivalry with CT. Come yeah. on, let me I do negative agree. five for that. Let's do five because I feel like Josh is going to have a handful of these. That's the thing. All right, <laughs> is that is that is that sure. fair? If, if, if because, he doesn't have any other thing for this this episode, let's do ten. It's just the gravity of how goofy it Here's is. Here's the thing. I agreed because he felt like he was betrayed by everyone in the house when Kyle stole Cam. I think I should get negative five for that too. All right, but here, that's at the end. Let me tell you guys. Here's what's got to happen. We can't spend 60 to 120 seconds on no, each of no. these because I got a lot of points to hand out here. Yeah, so we got to move quick through these. We're, okay. Let's so go. There, is it just negative five? Is that what we're doing? Let's do that because he's going to have more. I'm going to have more. But for the same type of thing. Now, look, uh, I'm inclined to give Joseph a thousand points for his thousand ab reps, but let's be realistic here. I would win the whole season if that happens. I, I'll give the guy. A thousand reps as goofy as it was, I'll give him ten points. All right, he's gonna lose fifty in a minute. You know, so, <laughs> so 
Um, oh, it's negative 25, right? Mm-hmm. What? If for losing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was wrong on that. I am going to give Leroy five points for making fun of his thousand rep ab workout. Um, That's number three. Yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. I'm I'm trying to differentiate one week from another, so let me let me let me do this a little bit more. Okay, you know what I'm you give you some time. No, you can, you can keep going. Was the, the negative five was from last week? So let me move there. Yeah, okay, we're okay. Um, listen, I I gotta deduct five from ninety for thinking that Josh is a good competitor. Number seven for me. Um, yeah, how, deduct I agree how with that. many? Five. Five. All right. Um. Hey, can I give ten to Nam for getting all the ladies' attention? I'm uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's a solid <laughs> get right there. Just look at him. I, I want to give Nelson five for when you know it, it flashed a uh, challenge activated in the room. He went challenge activated. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, I just want to give him five for that. All right, that's fine. That's on mine. Yeah. Um, I'm getting very we got we we got to deduct five for his helmet being on backwards though, don't yep. we? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, he also told people to watch this stroke, which I think is worthy of five points. All right, he's he's, he's <laughs> so, coming and going. Uh, uh, Nicole's got to be deducted five for you not realizing that Nicole. ice floats. Because aren't there two? No, there's one Nicole. Oh. Yeah, two, two Ambers. That's Nicole, right. you said negative ten, negative five. Oh, okay, I was prepared to give her ten, but that's fine. <laughs> um, let's see. Negative five for not knowing how to talk. Listen, uh, we got to give five to Wes every time a swimming challenge comes up. It's always remembered that he is the swimming champ. Yeah, yeah. So five for being the All swimming right. champ. I gave it to him. Um, you know what? Let's give five to Leo for being a good, encouraging partner because at one point. Uh, it's Aunt, it's Gabby, Gabby. <laughs> yeah, Gabby is out there. I, I don't know if she's ready to quit or what. He's like, you got this. <laughs> and so, uh, shout out to him for being an encouraging partner. Um, have you given anything to Lolo or is that last week? Uh, That's, that was last week. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I have not given anything to Lolo just yet. to make sure. Um, I'm going to fix this for next week. I got to give negative 10 to Wes and Natalie for being the first team out on the daily. Okay. <sighs> She said, okay, because it's mine and your team, Jeff. Oh, I thought Natalie was on my team. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the reason why I'm in first place. Uh, you're scrolling up and down, and it's throwing me off. I can't um, remember who all I have. At one point during... Ter- by the way, every person on this is literally on the screen right now. At one point during the Daily, Nani said she felt clueless, which falls right in line, so negative five for Nani. Thanks. That's fine. Is is this negative five from this week? Yeah, because she said yeah. Josh. All right, here we go. Uh, Michi needed a medic. Yeah, that's negative ten right I there. Think a solid negative ten. It's a DQ. I don't think you have. To, I don't think you give that to his partner because it was no, his fault. just him. Yeah, I agree. Negative ten. But giving ten to Fessy for saving his life. Well, what, playing what, lifeguard. Lifeguard. I mean, Wes was the one who called it out. All right, we'll give five to Wes for calling it out. <laughs> Ten to Fessy for saving him. Five to Wes for calling for uh, the medic. Yeah, you're you're welcome. Yeah, I knew you had Wes. Um, I I also want to give. Can we give a Kyle a combined ten points here? Because while people were not figuring out where they wanted to put their what were they called kills? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, he called everybody idiots and then quoted Naki by just saying, "Just do it." <laughs> So, five for each. Ten points <laughs> ten there. Points for Give Kyle. me ten for yeah. Kyle. Uh, hold on, where is he? Oh, he's number took, two on my list. Second overall. I, it's going to pay off today. But yes, it will pay I, off today. I knew he's a good competitor, and he's funny. Yeah. Um, also, he's one of my favorite people. 25 each to Anissa and Fessy for winning the daily. Yes. Yeah, Fessy had that from last week. All right. Um... Where did I get? Where is? Oh, here we go. Uh, let's give five to Wes for putting in a job application um, for a janitor, and then yeah. and then upping it to CEO. Yeah. Um. Uh. The strategic thinkers tag team award goes to Wes and Devin. Uh, five points each. Okay. Number six. That's the first scoring for Devin. Yep. Um. 
you got to give five to Fessy for catching a vibe and unbuttoning his shirt. Okay. In front of all the ladies yeah. and showed his personality. Um, negative five to ninety for typical overthinking and the uh, the she's bubble all, club. She's she's, she's said, only negative fives for yeah. me. Now he's gonna weigh you down. Yeah. Um. Do. What do you spit it out? Well, Lolo gets horny. <laughs> yeah. So is that a positive or a negative? <sighs> it depends on how you look at it. She's a virgin. Is that correct? Yeah, she's yeah. very open about that. So it's it's a negative if she's horny. Yeah, it's messing her her, I, her brain I, up. I guess it's a detriment to herself. Negative yes. five. <laughs> Self sabotage. Um, let's see. Uh, I gotta. <laughs> you know what? Nom takes off his clothes. Give me points. We uh we uh well, I feel like we do we want to give him an additional five. I feel like we all already gave him five or ten or whatever for. Getting the ladies. Do we want to give him another five for taking his clothes off? No, nah, he gets ten for yeah. taking his nah clothes hasn't off. Hasn't gotten anything this this. Oh wait a second. Yeah, did he? Is yeah, it ten? Did. So he didn't get anything last week. He did not. Oh okay. yeah, sure? I already gave him points for giving the ladies attention that's, earlier. That's my fault. Oh, that's my fault. Okay. I had I had the ten for the last week. I want to give. Uh, you know, she got a lot of crap for not being able to be understood. I, Peanut butter had a smoker's laugh at one point. And I want to give her five for that. Thank you. <laughs> Um, She's back at she zero. broke even. I want to give Devin five for calling his partner an infant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, which is peanut butter. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, during that conversation when Devin was telling Kyle uh, that he can't understand what his partner's saying ever, I thought, what a great buddy movie these guys would make. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Devin and Kyle, five points each. Yes, I get yeah. both. <laughs> oh, she does have both. I think. Yep. Fifty-five for Devin. No, that's a typo. We've Listen, a, that's a weird number. We wouldn't award that. I want to give ten to Kyle for the turtleneck. I'm telling you, he is. That, is right, Kyle's going to be the MVP he, tonight. He will. Kyle I knew he was. is yeah. dressing this season, and I am here for it. When um, uh, Big T and Joseph were having their first initial altercation, Darrell popped up and started eavesdropping. I got to give five for Darrell for being sneaky. Um, Liv did the same thing. She was sitting behind them. Did you say I didn't see Liv? Yeah. She was actually. Like, well, she, if like I'm, they cut to her twice, and the second time she was like leaning in to hear better. If we're giving five to Darrell, we got to give five to Liv, too. So is, She's number 10 I, yeah, on here. Is Darrell. Nine. Has he, is this from tonight, or was that last week? That was. That's last week. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. So Darrell gets five, and then Liv's. Uh, yeah, this has gotten a lot more complicated. Um, so I'm, I'm working on it. It's a work in progress. Um,. Do we give or deduct points on Big T for being ex-girlfriend material? I think that's got to be a deduction, even though she's on my team. Negative five. Yeah. And and okay, yeah. That's her first of the night. Um, she was at negative five last week. I'm going to give her Big T and Joseph. I'm going to give oh, yeah. her another negative five for copying it's Nelson bad, with the double O Big T. It's a bad night. Um, because he did that. For, he originated it. Double yeah. O Nelson or I'm, whatever. I, 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 I will a hundred percent say I think after this week Hannah's going to be in the lead and I'm probably going to be in third place. Um, I want to. Can we give West ten points for being rich? You already gave him points for being rich. Did I? I think so. I think so. Oh no! You know what? You gave him your superlative for being rich. That's right. That's what it was. Let's do five for that. Why five? Because you've given West twenty five points and fives already. <laughs> you have. Well, he earned it tonight. I mean, look how many points Kyle has. Don't, 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 don't shame me. Kyle, but, but, or just, point shame no, no, me. No, I'm not. So I just want you to realize you've you've awarded Kyle three times. And Kyle's Kyle's got a lot coming. I know, but you've awarded Kyle three times, and you've <laughs> awarded to Wes seven times already. <laughs> I I f- I feel like I right, I'm we'll okay get, with we'll, with five points that, for Rich. That's what I said. We'll give him five because. I'm gonna give Darrell five for saying Wes isn't rich. It's your own team, so it's the same. So there we go. It's the same difference. Um, let's give Natalie five for being scary. Okay, she was kind of scary. Um, I 
I'm going to give Kyle another 10 for wearing what looked like a kangaroo hat. <laughs> he was. I <laughs> saw that, and I was like, I mean, okay, this is the one that's I questionable. Think it, I think you all honestly could deduct 10 points for that. You want to deduct five? Five. Deduct five. Yeah, I, I, I think even though it's funny, I don't think... It was, yeah. it was funny, but that was questionable, and I didn't like it. Okay. I, it enough that I... Burned it out of my memory and you, forgot you've, about you've it. You already awarded him for the turtleneck for dressing nicely. I think you got to take some back for that. Do we want to give okay or take that. points away for him still lying? Po- I want to. I want to get points because he thought it would be funny to lie to Fessy. It is objectively funny, but it did. It, that is one hundred percent the reason he got put into an elimination. It's just got to be a negative. I think it does have to be a negative, negative five. Oh, dang. Like even though I love it, it is single handedly the reason he's in an elimination. I know, but he like he he planned to do it. He thought it would be funny. Negative five each to Big T and Joseph for getting voted in. Oh, it. These these are gonna kill me. I should have just picked Josh instead of trying to make it funny and make Hannah have Josh as the last. Pick. I think Josh is gonna get me a lot of points. Oh, next week he is for sure. Negative five each to Kyle and Nani for getting voted in by Fessy and Anissa. All right. Ooh, Nani's racking. I have Nani and Kyle. Yeah, Nani's racking up a bunch of negative for you. Um, I want to give uh West five for calling himself the Wrath. I don't even remember. He that. said, I you, don't remember "You say that. my name, you get the Wrath." I don't think he called himself the Wrath. I think, being I w- fully honest, I think that's a little bit of a stretch. If anything, I would give point. I would give five points for. Each. Him saying you've woken the sleeping giants. Do you have points for that? No. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll all right. That. We'll do five for for both of those. That'll work. Or fifty five. No, I got to put a comma in there. Um, I got to du- deduct five from Kyle for getting blindsided. He didn't see it coming. He did yeah. not see it coming enough that like I'm telling you, he had tears in his eyes that he was fighting back. Negative five to Big T for getting her partner's name wrong again. She did. She called him Jason um, and then asked for his name. Another negative five to Joseph for being unforgettable. Oh, my God. These guys are going to kill me. Uh, but you know what? I I kind of want to give him ten for being pulling a first and licking mustard. <laughs> that was, it I, I, was weird. I, he... I, I, I will say objectively, I think that that's something we're going to look back on him today. Remember that guy licked mustard? Yeah. But it's memorable. Yeah. yeah. That's why yeah, I want to give him memorable. 10. And enough that everybody else in the area was dumbfounded. Including the two people that are in the best shape of anyone arguably ever on the show. Um, I want to give Kyle five points for proving Nani wrong, who questioned Kyle earlier in the episode and his competitiveness. I'm fine yes. with that. Um, Let's see. I'm going to have a lot of math to do, so you guys are going to have to talk on your own. Let me, this. uh, can I give t- Kyle 10 more for the Michael Jordan Space Jam stretch with that ring? No, to that, that, the game that's out? a stretch. Because he, he's going to get 50 in a minute. I, but that's iconic. He did the iconic Space Jam stretch. I think that's a stretch scored wise. Uh, you're not kidding, it is. <laughs> I mean that th- to me. That literally, I'm to give it, literally I'm a stretch. To give it to him. You wanted to do ten. I, I'm gonna. I wanted to do five. 10. Okay, I was gonna object to that, but I think ten is a lot for that. Yeah, because I didn't even remember it happened. Uh, elimination win, fifty points That's to Kyle. I knew that was coming. Yes. Uh, an elimination loss, minus twenty five to Joseph. He went home. Um. Do we add or deduct points with Kyle for yakking? For what? Throwing, Throwing up. up. Negative five because oh, he's negative losing, five because that, fluid. That's like HP. <laughs> yeah. Um, Plus five for calling out Fessy. Well, hold, I'm not there. <laughs> I feel like we've got to give him points for being the first infiltrator. Y- yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I I do agree with that change of partner. I mean, he that's got to be plus partner, ten. I think. I'll give him ten for that. Um, and deduct points for Josh. For just getting just his feelings hurt, negative 10. Just in general. Negative 10. He got his feelings hurt, and he lost his partner. An addition, well, I guess that goes, uh, I want to give Kyle five more for hurting Josh's feelings, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so, even though, you just even, hate Josh. <laughs> I'll agree to that. <laughs> uh, but in, it worked out in the end because Nani and Josh got partnered together, and they that's what Nani wanted. Um, Negative ten for both. I want to give. No, you can't do that. Do to we want to do that? No. no. Uh, I want to give five to CT for getting back in the game. 
Yeah. Um, no matter whose partner is, he's back. Five points to Big T for upgrading to CT. I no, think that's that ten. Ten, because that's a major upgrade for her. Sure, ten. Even though she had almost nothing to do with it. No, but to go from hey, I'm fine with from it. America's Got Talent to CT, that's at, a big deal. She was at negative 20 until that 10. I want to give negative five to Josh for what seemed to be just stupid stuff happening in the preview for next week. It was a part of this week. That's not part of the episode. I think, I think, All right, I fine. Think we can't, we can't, cause he's going to get fine. points for next week. That's fine. Okay, yeah. so that is... Uh, is that it? That is it. Okay, guys, you guys are going to have to talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to have to do some quick math. Okay. Han, how you doing? You feel good? Yeah. Are you? I'm, I'm taking, I'm trying to look at all of this. Um, did we do the points for... Do not, for don't talk to me uh, about stuff. I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not asking I'm, you. I'm talking, I'm, about, I'm talking out loud. Did we do the points for... Scoring's final. I gotta add this up. I'm asking before you do that. Did we do the points for Kyle calling out Fessy? Scoring's final. Kyle is gonna have like 120 points. It's a fair game, and I want to keep it fair. I did. I did give. I mean, I looked over that one. I did give five, uh, Kyle five points for calling out Fessy, and also deducted five. Deducted five from Fessy for getting called out. Yeah. Well, then it, it I'm offsets. Okay with that. Does it, well, okay. No, no you, you gotta, need you to gotta, add it. You have to put it in. Thank you. Math, math wizard. <laughs> no, not being a math wizard. I'm all this stuff. You, you have to have records of everything. <laughs> this is going in the almanac. <laughs> yeah. Marty McFly's going to find it in 20 years. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. He can't even add because he's laughing. <laughs> I, I, can, add. I can always I add. Can, I, oh, the almanac. Oh, Good man. Good lord. Um, oh, did you I say awkward? Huh? No. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, God. This is riveting. This is This is the part of the pod where you can just breathe for a minute. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause recording and then come back with the totals. Okay, we are back, and I have done all of that math, and uh, yeah, kind of went exactly how I was, I was expecting. Um, so, I blew you guys out of the water. So, because Kyle's scoring was all over the place, um, Hannah, I'm going to reveal it to you guys on this screen. Scored 115 Ooh. tonight. Boy, Alone? Jumped. Wow. Jumped from 30 well, to 115. Fe- Does that include the 30? From last week? Yeah. This is no, just her week This is two. just weekly. Wow. So, <coughs> I on, again, Fessy and Kyle were the, the two big contributors on her. Uh, and Devin had a little bit in Nam. And then Nani was negative 20 and Josh was negative 15. For me... Um, I had a lot of scoring. I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I had 21 individual scores tonight. And my score for the week is exactly zero. Really? <laughs> no perfect. negatives? It all canceled out. <laughs> no perfect. negatives. Are you kidding? No, I had a lot of negatives, but they all canceled out. The positives and negatives canceled out. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, you didn't end up with, like, negative <laughs> 10 total. You just... Pretty close to zero. zero. <laughs> Good <laughs> lord. Um, anyway, uh, Jake, on the other hand, had a lot of scoring from Wes. Uh, you know, he had a couple negatives here and there, and then Anissa bringing in the the daily again. So his score for the week was. Whoop, let me get over here. He had fifty five. Okay. So for the season total, Hannah is at one forty five. Yes. I am still the same at 35, <laughs> and uh, Jake is at 80. So, uh, Jake, nice. even if you combine our two scores together, she's still in the lead. So but it, you see how quick it can change. It flipped completely <laughs> tonight. Yeah. I was yeah. in the lead, and then all of my stuff canceled out because my guy got sent home. Big T kind of sucks. CT stuff all canceled out. Um, and so, you know what? It is what it is. Kyle and Fessy... Clear front runners, and then you know, De- Devin and Nam squeezing by with a positive 30 combined is what really helped her out, too. 
I got a feeling Josh in particular is going to lose you a lot of points next week. Or gain, because aren't we aren't we giving points for people getting into fights? It depends. It, it depends it, on the context. It depends. So again, Josh being typically Josh, an idiot, he's probably going to lose a lot of points. Yeah. Um, I will not reward stupidity. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's where we're at. Don't uh, hurt me too much. Hannah is at 145. And you're you're in the lead by 65 points. Okay, but this is exactly what happened in our fantasy football league. I was like top three, top four seed through. I was I was really high up for the first half of the season, and then I lost like two, three games in a row because I had a lot of players in injured reserve and COVID, and then I inched my way back up, and then I lost my last two games, and I'm the 11th seed now. All right, well, I have no control over that. Yeah, again, this is completely different just because uh, the scoring is non-standard, and we all just kind of decided on the fly. It varies um, week to week. But yeah, so you do have control over it. You can be nice and let me win this. Uh, that will not that happen. That will not happen. If um, you win, you'll win fair. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so... Uh, right now, I mean, commanding lead. But as we've seen, you scored 115 in this week alone. If Jake or I scored 115 and then someone else like I did this week went uh, just a net zero, uh, it could completely flip the game. So, uh, you know, I still, I'm still i feeling okay about my team, but, you know, it is what it is. Hannah uh, still has her full team. You and I have each lost one person. Which, I, honestly, uh, <laughs> Joseph was just costing me points. So I'm okay with it. He had negative last week, and he had negative this week. So. I was banking on Ashley being a big one. I agree. Um, that's a yeah. loss for me. Yeah, that is a big loss. That's a loss. That was your number four pick. So, yeah. uh, like I said, at the top and of- just 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 looking at it, so scroll all the way to the top. Okay. People who have not contributed any points. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Corey. Corey's done nothing. Uh, Cam scored last week, but not this week. Amber M, which I don't expect her to do honestly anything. Uh, yeah, she's done nothing. Um, Teresa. Teresa hasn't done anything. Amber B. Amber B. Um, Tori. T- was surprising. Court and Casey, which is not surprising. So we all have two players who have not done yeah. anything on our teams. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting. I think Corey's got a good chance to do something. I think. Uh, I don't think Amber M does. I think both of mine that have are zeros. Teresa and and Amber B both have a chance to you know possibly win an elimination a daily something like that and. Tori, I think for sure is going to score, and Casey's going to score. They're going to do something. Uh, I think Amber M has the possibility to go scoreless for an entire season and then go home, which would be in the negative. Yeah. For her, so, uh, so uh, it is what it is. Like I said at the top of the show, um, we uh, we appreciate all the support on Patreon, Patreon dot com slash Mastinus Podcast. If you are a patron at the Bloodlines level, be looking out for a post uh, regarding the next Zoom hangout because it'll be. We've narrowed it down to one or two, one of two days next week. So be checking that out. And again, if you don't want to listen to the ads, all that stuff, Patreon, you know, the five dollar level, the free agents level, gets you everything ad free plus access to all of our Patreon exclusive podcasts. Patreon dot com slash Mastinus Podcast. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and please rate and review us on iTunes. Five star reviews really do help. So if you could do that, if you haven't, uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, great season. We'll see you guys next week. Yep. Have a good night, everyone.